Hey guys, so this is officially the uh, second issue that I've had or that I have run into now with my Mega Squirt Turbo uh, conversion. Um, within the last year, I installed it in January of 2017. Uh, it's now December 27, 2017, so almost a year. Uh, has been running flawlessly for the last year, well, almost a year. Um, and I can't really say that this is my official second issue because uh, it's not really affecting drivability. The first issue, which I'll link in the description, there's, there, I made a video about it. Um, I had a coolant leak underneath the throttle body and um, what happened was that coolant got onto the throttle position switch. Oh, I better move this. Uh, coolant got onto the throttle position sensor it's not a switch it's an actual potentiometer sorry and what was happening is that um, it was constantly showing um, I can't remember now was it wide open or closed throttle one of the two anyways the vehicle wouldn't start on me I went to park it went shopping came back and went to start it and it just cranked and cranked and cranked luckily I had my uh, cell phone with well, I always have my cell phone with me, but um, the good thing or the cool thing about the uh, Mega Squirt is that you can watch Live engine data with your cell phone using an app uh, So I turned on the app and I noticed that no matter where the throttle position was uh, it didn't change uh, on the uh, cell phone in the app so I disconnected the throttle uh, and tried cranking and sure enough it cranked uh, It's now coming back to me. Sorry um, the the, um, thr the throttle signal was always pegged as wide open. So as soon as the uh, Mega Squirt thinks that the throttle is in the wide open position, it basically goes into a clear flood mode, like uh, a lot of the domestic vehicles have that incorporated, um, just to clear out a flooded engine. Uh, stops the fuel from squirting or additional fuel from squirting, and then you just crank until. The fuel that's in the intake in the cylinders is, is pumped out so anyways uh, that was my first actual problem that could have left me stranded and the second problem which I'm currently having is when viewing the air fuel ratio with the uh, cell phone app on my phone or on the laptop uh, the program the app show that the airflow meter is stuck at nine um, uh, nine to one ratio which is really rich uh, I know that the vehicle isn't running that rich because I have a second wideband sensor that is attached to my ga uh, to a gauge on my dash or in my dash. So when driving, I can see the air fuel ratio changing from uh, you know a rich mixture of 11 to one to a lean mixture of way past 16 to one. It'll actually peg in the two, in the 20s, which is maximum to the right here. Uh, when decelerating fuel shut off so that the engine's just pumping air uh, and then you get this lean mixture and when cruising steady uh, it, it follows the fuel map that I programmed in Mega Squirt so I know that there is nothing wrong with the Mega Squirt uh, being stuck at 9 but for whatever reason it's taking an input from the airflow meter seeing it as 9 uh, and luckily it's not responding trying to um, trying to decrease that uh, or increase the air fuel ratio to bring it into the lean pocket uh, you'll see that a lot on uh, older vehicles when an O2 sensor gets stuck be it lean or rich the computer will compensate uh, <clears throat> so if it's stuck lean the computer will keep dumping in more fuel to try to get a rich signal uh, and by that time the engine starts to bog down you might get black smoke out the exhaust because of the richness uh, conversely if it's stuck rich uh, the O2 sensor the uh, engine computer will take fuel away uh, and then you'll get hesitation it'll start to bog down uh, because it's running so lean uh, misfires in the intake etc so that's not happening um, and then there's a few things that I tested on the O2 connector uh, so this is a Mega Squirt 2 PNP, which means plug and play, uh, and basically what it uses is a stock wiring harness for the M20 engine, uh, be it E30 or E34 in this case, um, and the control unit uh, that the Mega Squirt is is inside of is basically a stock looking um, uh, BMW control unit box. 
Um, and so it's taken advantage of the stock wiring harness and all these additional things, be it the map sensor uh, or this wideband conversion is utilizing the stock narrow band connector. So with the engine running, there are one, two, one, two, three, four wires. Yeah, four wires, should have just looked here, sorry. So four wires in the stock harness. Uh, there's a positive and negative for the heater. There's a, uh, a ground uh, for the O2 and a signal, signal wire pin. Um, what the Mega Squirt though incorporates, because this is a wide band, you can't just plug a wide band into a narrow band harness. Um, there is this little controller board. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it does. These Mega Squirt guys are quite um, knowledgeable and it's ingenious that they come up with these types of things. So there's this little controller board here. It basically takes the um, the power and ground, the power and ground from the um, O2 circuit, O2 sensor heater circuit, sorry. Uh, it feeds it through the controller, powers up the wideband O2 sensor, and then um, it does some kind of processing in terms of the signal, and then it sends a voltage back out on the uh, regular O2 sensor signal wire, uh, and that voltage varies from a low 1 volt to as high as 4.5. Uh, the low, low voltage means it's running rich, the high voltage means it's running lean. So there's two issues at this point. Uh, I know I get power and ground for the heater circuit. Uh, that measured up, tested out good. When disconnected, there is no voltage on the signal wire, which is, which is good in terms of there's, um, uh, there's nothing feeding into that circuit. Um, and then, so the only variable now is the O2 sensor itself or this little circuit board. Uh, there is a little le a little LED light that blinks when the uh, controller is active uh, or whenever the vehicle is running. So again, I'm not too sure how to test this at this point, uh, aside from um, checking for a voltage output. When revving up and decelerating, I should be expecting a high voltage, 3 volts or more, because of fuel shutoff. I'm not seeing that. Um, and over here, it's not as it's not as easy to to test with because, or at least in my opinion, because I I, I think that it would still rely on the controller. Um, I did check over here as well to see if there is any type of voltage increase on a snap throttle. There is not, so at this point, I'm leaning towards a uh, fault with this O2 sensor. Um, so I'll let you guys know what happens once I get it. Um, I'm waiting for it right now. I might record the installation and the immediate um, difference if there is any. Um, and then um, we'll see what happens. Uh, I may need to do further testing uh, if that doesn't solve it. Um, it's sort of a parts change um, deal at this point simply because I don't have the know-how on troubleshooting this further. Like I said, uh, all I know is that there should be a low to high voltage depending on uh, fuel ratio uh, and snapping the throttle changes that mixture because I have verification on my dash, dash gauge. Um, and since nothing happens here, the only other, the other variable could be that there is an open between here and here. Um, so back probing at the box would be also a next step. But I'm trying to do as little work as possible at this point and an O2 sensor isn't that expensive at this point and uh, it could very well be that this O2 sensor is bad. Um, is it this one or this one? Sorry, it's this one. Um, I don't think it's a matter of the O2 sensors being too close. I've seen them closer on turbo vehicles, uh, even on Volkswagens, uh, be it diesel or gasoline. They're right up against the uh, turbine. So they can take a beating, that's for sure. Uh, but like I said, I think the quickest thing at this point would be to just to change the O2 sensor and see what happens. Hey guys, so um, I thought I'd give you guys an update here. I, um, I mentioned that my air fuel ratio is stuck at 9. No matter what throttle position or with, um, with fuel shut off, the air fuel ratio always stays the same.
So this uses a wideband O2 sensor and a controller. This is the controller that um, manipulates the wideband air fuel O2 sensor. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, it basically fits out a zero to one volt, uh, sorry, a zero to five volt signal to the um, mega squirt controller through the stock wiring harness. Um, since I don't know how to test this guy, you know, internally there is nothing to test. Uh, my first step was to change the O2 sensor. You know, yes, it's a waste of money if it doesn't solve anything and. Um, if it does solve it, then at least I know it was the O2 sensor, but I have no documentation on how to test this circuit board. And even if there is a fault with this circuit board, I can't do anything about it. So anyways, what I ended up doing is I tied into my uh, uh, map sensor right there. Uh, it's got a 5 volt reference signal, so I'm, I'm piggybacking my test light. This has got a 5 volt uh, voltage here now. And when I touch the um, signal wire that goes to the mega squirt from this controller, my air fuel ratio changes. So let me just get that on film here. So it's the black wire here. I hope you saw that. So it was up to about 18 um, for the AF. AFR air fuel ratio. So um, there's there's an issue with this guy here. Um, I'm gonna have to see if I can get another one. Uh, it's been a year now, so I don't think I'm gonna get any type of warranty out of it. But uh, at least I now know what the problem is. I know that the wiring from the stock plug connector here to the mega squirt is okay, simply because it changes when I uh, apply voltage on it. Um, so at least now I can uh, continue um, with the repair in terms of getting a new controller. And like I said earlier, it's not affecting the actual fuel mixture. You can hear it's running perfectly smooth. Uh, it's just that the uh, mega squirt control, uh, the, the mega squirt thinks that it's running rich, but it's not. And luckily, the mega squirt is not trying to compensate by taking fuel away. So anyways, that's my update for you guys. Okay, so uh, I got the new wideband controller. And you can see at idle now, the air fuel ratio changes. Whereas before it did not. That was fuel shut off just now. Uh, the new controller is similar to the one that I had, uh, but it came with this little display. And that's reading fairly close to what my other one is reading. Um, it's, it's a few points different, but uh, it's fairly accurate still. They're going lean and they're going back to rich. Uh, at idle, it wants to run a little bit on the rich side. It's smoother that way. Uh, but at least now I can go back to uh, tuning this or even let the self-tuning do its job. Um, the auto-tune is on right now and uh, you'll see as as it goes over the fields the, uh, ch the changes will show up on the right either taking fuel away or uh, adding fuel. see I think it was adding some right there uh, but anyways that was my update now and uh, as always it's a work in progress uh, you know the, the clutch isn't slipping yet but it's grabbing high then the clutch is the next thing once I have a new clutch in it um, and probably once I'm back from Germany that's when I'm gonna floor it to see what she can do do some smoke shows etc uh, thanks for your continued interest uh, stay tuned